Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Keisha and this is Beauty and Comfort. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I bring my mistletoe soap to life. For starters, I have a green color here and I've already put in my green French clay. The next color here is my red color. This is gonna be a red, green, and white soap. For the details here, the green colorant is radioactive mica and OMG, I forgot, hold on. <laughs> this is radioactive in three olive martini mica from Mad Micas. And then I added the French green clay. This container here, I have my rose kaolin clay and the red kit from Mad Micas. And I also threw in a little bit of another red color, which is this one. This is Ruby Red Mica, and this is from Southwest Candle Supply because I wanted this to have a deeper, not a true fire engine red color, but almost like a berry because I'm going for mistletoe holly kind of vibe. So I kind of was going in that route. This is my triple butter recipe. It has shea, cocoa, and mango butter. It's 30% of the overall oils. It's a very moisturizing bar, very creamy bar. I love this recipe. It's one of my favorites, especially for winter skin. Next over here is our sodium lactate and tussle silk fibers that I've already dissolved in my light solution. I'm gonna be adding white kale and clay to my base, which will be white. I'm gonna be using buttermilk as the milk additive for this soap. And I also already have my titanium dioxide, which I've already dissolved in water. I also made a custom blend fragrance here. I was trying to figure out what I wanted. So I just started playing around and I sat and thought about it. And I came up with a combination that I'm absolutely in love with. It has a little bit of apple, a little bit of berries. And I also have it on a base of cashmere. I'm really digging this. I really think you guys are gonna enjoy this one and we're gonna be adding this at the end just to be on the safe side because I don't know how all this is gonna to come together. I'm also gonna be adding a vanilla stabilizer to this one as well because of all the fragrances that I use. I just don't wanna take any risk with my white turning some funky color. I got my gloves here. I have my stick blender. So let's get soaping. As always, you wanna suit up for safety, so make sure you put your gloves on. I also recommend wearing gloves when you're playing around with fragrance oils because your hand will smell like whatever it is for a while. It's like a really strong perfume moment and nobody needs too much of that. So let me get my, there it is. Grab my handy dandy thermometer here. My oils are currently sitting at 85. My lye is in the high 70s, which is roughly room temperature. Um, I wanted to soak with this between 85 or higher because of all the butters. I don't want to risk this getting too thick too, um, too fast. My measuring spoon is in other rooms. So I'm going to use a large tablespoon instead, just so I can get the additives in here. So I'm going to take a generous scoop of the kale and clay and a generous scoop of the buttermilk. And as always, when you're done with the product, get it out of the way. It just gives you more space to work with. And I have that philosophy with everything that I do whether it's making soap or candles or lotions, my wax melts, whatever I'm doing, I always try to put what I'm done with to the side. This prevents me from using things multiple times, accidentally using more than what I needed and so forth and so forth. I'm gonna go ahead and get the attachment, put that under water, give it a shimmy, moisten the dry ingredients. Now I'm gonna hook up the blender. We're gonna pulse this for about 30 seconds to a minute and make sure we don't have any globs of powder that we miss. So let's get blended. Scrape the sides and the bottom to make sure we don't have any dry powder lingering and pingering here. And we're gonna tilt them to the side. So we're gonna give it a swirl, burp the baby, tilt them to the side. Now we're gonna get our lye solution. As I stated earlier, this already has my sodium lactate and my tussle silk fibers in it. All right. And I'm just gonna post this on low as I pour in my lye solution. 
Get every last drop in there. Swirl. Now, I'm gonna blend this on low, blend and stir in this until we reach emulsification. As I said, this is a custom blended fragrance that I'm gonna to use today, so I'm not really sure how this is gonna react as far as acceleration. I know how each fragrance works independently, but I'm not sure how they're gonna work as a group. So just to be on the safe side, we're just gonna to get to emulsion. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and measure off the appropriate amount of fragrance for this. Ugh. I'm gonna put this cap on too tight. Since I don't want to mess up another jar to pour this in, I'm gonna get my scale, put your batter on, tear it out, and then pour in the appropriate amount of fragrance. Ooh, I eyeballed that perfectly. I'm gonna add my vanilla stabilizer. And the vanilla stabilizer that I'm gonna be using, this is called Vanilla White Color Stabilizer, and I get this one from Nature's Garden. All right, now that everybody's in the party, I'm just gonna give it a good blending. Mixing it with my attachment, I'm gonna give this a blitz on low for just a few seconds to make sure my fragrance is in. All right, all right. Let's pull in our two accents colors. Again, this is a custom green color that I've also added French green clay to. And this is my red color with the rose kale and clay. Let's pour this in. I'm gonna fill both of these up. Almost full. I want more red than green actually, so I'm gonna stop. Let's go ahead and get the titanium dioxide in there. I'm gonna go ahead and blend my white first. He's looking good, looking good. Go ahead and scrape this down. And it's important, even when you're doing white, to really scrape down the sides because the uncolored batter could be a yellow color, it could be an off-white or whatever and you really don't want to deal with multi-tones, so always scrape it down. I'm gonna red swap places. And I'm just gonna swirl this first and see what I get. Ooh, that's looking gorgeous. Don't tell me, I don't know how to plan. <laughs> now to dunk it into the red. This is not a true fire engine red color, but it's definitely beautiful. Now that all our colors are ready, steady, let's get pouring. We're gonna start by wiping up this mess here. We don't want to like knowing the truth here. And zoom you guys in. All right, now that we're all close and personal, I'm gonna be doing a drop swirl with a hanger swirl. It's always best to pre-measure your hanger when it's a flexible hanger tool like this because it just makes it so much easier, trust me. Now that we know he fits, sit him over here to the side, pour in our white. Uh-oh, that is settling fast. I'm gonna wipe this off so I don't transfer any red in here and have pink instead. All right, now that I've loosened up the white, let's pour it in to almost full. Let's turn it this way, make it easier for everybody. Get that in there. I'm gonna leave some batter there. Now I might need to get another tool because this is thickening on me, which is like I said, this is something that you're gonna run into if you're doing custom fragrances because you don't really know how each component will affect the other. Be prepared. Yeah, be prepared. Yeah, I will be prepared. <laughs> For what? For anything. I'm trying to get this as loose as possible using my spatula. And if you run into situations like this where you're noticing that your batter is thickening, you can take a whisk or a spatula and just give it a nice swirly dirly and you should be good to go. I'm gonna dump this from high up. Get my hanger tool and I'm gonna press it down and I'm gonna bring it up. Swirl it, swirl it, swirl it. Clean it off. Put it on my paper towel. Ooh, 
Ooh, she's getting messy. Now we're gonna come back in with some more white. Get a little here and a little there. Get my red, same deal. And the green. So I was able to do two passes. If this was thinner, I probably could have got away with more, but this is gonna be fine. Okay, now I'm gonna give it a nice little tamp. Go back on my hanger tool, go halfway, swirly, swirly, swirly. There we go. Obviously, I don't want to swirl this too much. We don't want to muddle anything. But the thing I've learned with swirling is when you think you've done too much, you probably just did enough. And I have a spoon, so let's just go ahead and break everybody over, just like this. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, let this settle for a moment, get this excess batter into one of my individual molds so they don't harden up in my containers. I'll be right back. All right, so now that we've cleaned up a bit <laughs> and got everything under control, I'm gonna zoom you guys in so you can see the placement of the embeds. Now that we've gotten a little bit more up close and personal, let's look at this top. This is beautiful. Let's go over the embeds we're gonna be using. So I have some circle, some gumdrop embeds, that I slice in half and I'm gonna place these along the edges. I have these little beautiful gold ones that I sliced in the slices to kind of give it some kind of variety for just this three color tone. To get my glitter on, I'm gonna be using my handy dandy paintbrush and I wanna layer the glitter. So I'm gonna start by putting the glitter on first. So it can kind of get into all those crevy seats. If I can open it. All right, so we're gonna start with the green, green, green glitter first. Just a nice little spritzy spritzing. Nothing too major. I don't want this to be glitter-tastic. I just kind of want to highlight the high points, the waves and ridges that I put on with the spoon texturing. Okay. And what's left on here, I'm just gonna spricky dicky 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 right on off. And then I'm gonna get the red going, do the same thing. Just sort of get him in there right into this little part, most importantly. I'm gonna turn it this way, so. Flicking from an angle here. And I'm gonna turn around, do the same thing on this side. I've told you guys more than once, I'm sure. I'm very right-handed. <laughs> I can only do things with my right hand. So I'm gonna put these on, and these are gonna represent kind of like the holly berries. I'm just gonna line these up like this, right along the edge. As always, I'm struggling with using gloves. Who would have thought it again? And by pressing this in just enough, I'll be able to sort of mound this section here, which I want to do. Now I'm gonna come in here and get my hollies. <sighs> Plastic. And I'm going to just sort of squeeze these right on in, like so. And again, I grabbed a mold that does not have any markings. What is up with that? Now I did make a variety of these because I wanted to see like what would work best to be honest. Some of my hollies have all green and then some of them I was able to, with the best of my intentions, get the red in there. But it didn't work all the time. That's why I went with the red gumballs to kind of give you that holly berry vibe and still have the leaves, you know? I tried dusting the green ones with a little bit of the mica, thinking maybe that'll help me out, but it didn't. Two, three, four. Seven, eight. I'm short here, but do not worry. I have some smaller ones that I'm gonna like stick in here. And I'm gonna take these gold pieces and I'm just gonna stick these in here at random. Some of you will get the gold, some of you won't. This is just for a little bit of color other than, you know, like I said, the three colors that we were working with here. So what I'm focusing on is trying to make sure that if you don't get one thing, you'll get something. Everybody gonna get something. 
I'm not gonna overload this. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop. <laughs> I'm gonna grab some more glitter and I'm just gonna lightly sprinkle this on so you can kind of hit the embeds just a little bit. The thing about glitter that you always have to remember is this is gonna wash off. Um, some of it's gonna drop off. It's okay, it's okay. And the further away you are when you tap it, the more or less you're gonna have on there. So that's a really cool thing about glitter. You can kind of play around with it even though you don't have full control. I'm trying to fight the urge of adding more. But I think that looks gorge, yes. So here we are. Isn't that pretty? You got a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And of course you have all these little large holly berries going on. I'm gonna grab some alcohol, give it a good spritzing to lock in that glitter and prevent any additional unnecessary unwanted soda ashing. And boom. Can you guys see that glitter? Oh my God. It's really playing off the red and I'm loving it. There's also glitter in the embeds, well not glitter. The mica kind of gives you that shimmer too, so it's really pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up and put this bad boy to bed. We're gonna be back in 18 to 24 hours to unmold. So until then, I'll see you in the morning. Hi guys and welcome back. It's been 24 to 48 hours since we made this loaf and we've taken it out. He's rather firm. Again, this is a true butter recipe. So because of all the butters, the bar is rather on the firmer side today. Now let's get the cut. Going with the core, let's push it down in one smooth motion. Right. That is a thick one. <laughs> now let's remove the end piece and see what we look like on the inside. This is absolutely beautiful. They look amazing and they smell absolutely dreamy. I am so happy with the way this bar looks. It looks exactly how I wanted it to, even better. This is beautiful. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Did a great job, sweet. Thank you. This bar will be available in our December collection. This is the last design for the December holiday release, which will be available on December the 7th at noon Central Standard Time. And don't forget, this entire holiday season, we will be giving away one free bar to our comment of the week. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below so we can reach out to you and get you a bar of your own. And by the way, you can check in the description bar below We'll have our links to our other online social media handles. You can find us on Instagram at beautyandcomfort.com and on Facebook at beauty.in.comfort. That was wrong. What is it? Instagram.beauty.in.com. Just put the link in the box. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> All right, we want to thank you guys for watching, and we see y'all later. Bye. <laughs> That's Christine. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> she ready to get up. All right, so put your last bar back up so I can put the outro. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found inspiration in this design. And again, if you're interested in picking up any of the bars in the holiday collection, don't forget to stop at beautyandcomfort.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. This is beautiful.